Okay. Um, Maharaj, over to you. Okay, I was, um, correct me if I'm wrong, I was instructed to speak on verse number 51 from chapter 2. That's correct, Maharaj. Uh, so, would I uh, read the translation in verse? Is that yes, the please. protocol? Yes, please. Okay. Om Gyan Timirandasya Gyanajana Salakaya Chaksu Unmilitam Yena Tasmai Shri Guruve Namaha Ma Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shri Makti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamane Namaste Saraswati Devi Gauravani Pacharine Nirise Sasunyavari Pastyatya De Sitarine Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhara Sri Vasudhi Gaur Bhaktarindam Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare so we're reading from text 51, chapter 2, the contents of the Gita summarized. Okay. Karma Jambudi Yukta Hi Falam Takwa Manishi Naha Janma Banda Vinir Mukta Paragatsjat Anan Mayam. Translation. Need to go down the page. Okay. By thus engaging in devotional service of the Lord, great sages or devotees free themselves from the results of work in the material world. In this way, they become free from the cycle of birth and death and attain the state beyond all miseries by going back to Godhead. Srila Prabhupada's purport, the living liberated living entities belong to that place where there are no material miseries. The Bhagavatam 10, 14, 58 says, Samastritam ye parapalavam plavam mahatpadam punya yaso marare bhavam budir vatsapadam padam 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 yavipadam natesham For one who has accepted the boat of the lotus feet of the Lord, who is the shelter of the cosmic manifestation and is famous as Mukunda, or the giver of liberation of Mukti, the ocean of material world is like the water contained in a calf's footprint. Parampadam, or the place where there are no material miseries, or Vaikunta, is his goal, not the place where there is danger in every step of life. Hmm. Out of ignorance, one does not know that this material world is a miserable place where there are dangers at every step. Out of ignorance, only less intelligent persons try to adjust to the situation by fruit of activities, thinking that the resultant actions will make them happy. They do not know that no kind of material body anywhere within the universe can give life without miseries. The miseries of life, namely birth, death, old age, and disease, are present everywhere within the material world. The one who understands his real constitutional position as the eternal servitor of the Lord, and thus knows the position of the personality of Godhead, engages himself in the transcendental loving service of the Lord. Consequently, he becomes qualified to enter into the Vaikuntha planets where there is neither material, misery of life, nor the influence of time and death. To know one's constitutional position means to know also the sublime position of the Lord. One who wrongly thinks that the living entity's position and the Lord's position are on the same level is to be understood to be in darkness, therefore un unable to engage himself in devotional service of the Lord. He becomes a Lord himself and thus pays the way, paves the way for the repetition of birth and death. The one who understand, un who, but one, but one who understanding that his position is to serve, transfers himself to the service of the Lord at once becomes eligible for Vaikuntha Loka. Service for the cause of the Lord is called karma yoga or buddhi yoga, or in plain words, devotional service of the Lord. 
चलो प्रभु पाद की जय so this verse is and purport is right to the point um first of all we have to understand that we are something different than this material body and that constitutional position of identity is described in many places throughout the scriptures amai vamso jiva loke jiva bhuta sanatana masastana indriyani prakriti stani prakarsati the living entities are of the same nature of god god is holy and totally spiritual and we are also holy and totally spiritual but in a minute proportion therefore we have the same quality as god but we don't have the same quantity as a drop of water to an ocean is also has the same qualities of the ocean but has a different uh, dimension so in the same way the living entities are intimately and eternally connected to the supreme lord and here that connection is described before we delve into that part of the discussion we have to understand that we are in an unnatural situation it's unnatural to take birth it's unnatural to get old to experience disease and ultimately to die these things pertain to solely the physical body by which we inhabit and it is clear and krishna makes that clear throughout the bhagavad gita this is one of the main points in gita is that we are different than the body different completely uh although we are so intimately connected with the body and to the activities that we perform in this material world they are superfluous or what we say uh not at all connected to our actual identity our actual identity is pure spiritual and therefore in the material world we are finding ourselves in a awkward and uh and a Uh, and something that is contrary to our nature so this particular verse teaches us that there is one way to somehow or other reunite ourselves with krishna and and that is called devotional service as prabhupad winds up the purport after explaining the tendency of the conditioned soul in the material world is to try to adjust the material world in order to facilitate happiness and push away suffering but as prabhupad clear says and we can understand this in the practical sense also that um whatever situation one is in the material world these things come along birth death disease and old age no one wants them and they are simply imposed upon us because we have a material body or because we are encased in the material body but we have to understand that these things that cause misery do not affect us they simply affect the material body how do they affect us by identification when we identify these things as being part of our existence we uh we create this wrong mentality and we think that i get old i die i suffer i'm a man i'm a woman so many identities and so many different activities are related to the material body and these are all the causes of suffering in this material world adjustment there's a nice verse in the shrimad bhagavatam that explains that one cannot change one's destiny materially in other words one it says the karma divana trena which means that when we take birth in this material world we are have already written on the slate of our destiny what activities will cause us happiness and distress in other words we have a certain quantitative calib- calibration or you know calculation of how much we will suffer and how much we will enjoy in this world it's already calculated no one can change that uh just like the example is used that no one tries for suffering 
but it comes automatically. In fact, everyone is trying to push back the suffering and find ways to increase one's satisfaction and happiness in this world. So the verse in the Srimad Bhagavatam in the fifth canto, uh, I'm sorry, first canto, fifth chapter, verse number 18 explains that uh, just as happiness, uh, just as misery comes without one's wanting it, happiness also comes in the same way. So it cautions us not to try to increase happiness on the material level by trying to adjust material energy to work in a different way. The thing is, this is another form of uh, ignorance because we are not in control of the material energy and we can't adjust it. We can reposition ourselves in relationship to it, but we can't control that energy. As Krishna says, he explains that ultimately this material energy is working under his direction. And so we uh, apparently think that we can control the material energy. We can move it around, but we can't control it. When we try to control the material energy, we become controlled by that material energy. Just like we'll use a very loose example. A person who takes up smoking cigarettes becomes uh, attached and addicted to that activity and becomes controlled by the same activity that they perform. That, that principle works with everything in the material world. When we try to control, material energy, the material energy traps us into performing more of the same activities, which cause us more and more discomfort or ultimately, ultimately suffering. So this verse really gets right to the point and says that there is a way out of this and that's to regain our, our pure consciousness, which is called Krishna consciousness. And now that is by executing devotional service to the Lord. Devotional service to the Lord is not within the material energy. Although we may perform activities that look similar to the persons who are connected to the material energy. We eat, they eat, we sing, they sing. We cook, they cook. Uh, we drive, they drive. Uh, we clean, they clean. In other words, the activities also are similar, but the motivation and the consciousness is, uh, is different. The motivation for our activities is to purify our heart and become free from material attachments and to ultimately please the Supreme Personality of Godhead by our activities. That is actually the goal of devotional service. So one, when one engages in activities meant to please the Supreme Personality of Godhead, one is performing activities on the spiritual platform. They are not on the material platform. And the results are offered to Krishna as an expression of our devotion. The, uh, the results are not within our power to create, but we try to serve in such a way as to please the Lord and purify our consciousness. Purifying our consciousness means the more we stay in devotional service, the more we develop the consciousness of Krishna. And that is the process. And as Prabhupada would say, devotional service is simply practice. We have to practice to use our time, energy, intelligence, uh, possessions, whatever we have as uh, paraphernalia by which we use in the service of the Lord. The devotional service is on the liberated platform. Sometimes devotees ask, well, can I attain liberation? Well, Prabhupada would say that because you're engaged in devotional service and because devotional service is not part of this material world, you are already 
on the platform of liberation. Of course, liberation is one step down from our goal. Our goal is not liberation. Our goal is to develop a love for the Supreme Personality of Godhead by performing activities for his pleasure. And then, as Prabhupada says, then we create this consciousness which elevates us above the material energy. Although we might be working with apparently material paraphernalia and appear to be interacting in the same environment that we are always accustomed to, we are not in the material world. Just like, for instance, our temples. They are buildings, like any other building. They're made of the same materials. But what's the difference? Krishna is there. What's the difference? The activities are different. The activities are inside the temple are meant for devotion to the Lord. And therefore, although everything seems to be apparently similar between material and spiritual activities, the consciousness is different and the energy is completely different. That energy is the presence of the Supreme Lord in the temples. So this is um, this this mood when it's applied continuously, because you see, if you want to be expert at anything, you practice. You want to be expert at, you know maybe playing a particular instrument, you take some guidance and you practice. And after some time, you start developing the skills required. So in the same way, devotional service really means to practice the activities that detach us from the results of activities. The results of activities are what the non-devotees look for as success or failure. They judge happiness and distress, success or failure based on what happens when they perform their devotional service. But that is contrary and completely opposite of the mood of devotional service. We, play, we perform our activities in order to please Krishna. And with the, mood, the, ten, the desire to please Krishna is actually pleasing to Krishna. And the activities are our expression of our, our attempt to please Krishna. But Krishna is pleased if we're simply trying to please him. <laughs> and that is, uh, and the results, as Krishna says, one cannot bring about the results. The results are offered to Krishna as devotional service. And that's the difference between materialistic activities. Materialistic people are so much in anxiety about what will happen, will they enjoy, will they be happy, and they're always making plans and adjusting. Devotees adjust only to see how they can increase the quality of their devotional service. And that connects us with Krishna in devotion, because Krishna is only connected by devotional service. He says, Bhakti Mam Avijananti Yavan Yaschat Pitatvataha. Only by devotional service can I be known as I am standing before you and thus be seen directly. Only in this way can you enter into the mysteries of my understanding. So Krishna is available for each and every living entity who follows the path back to Krishna, and that is the process of devotional service. So this verse emphasizes it's the foundation for the knowledge that will come later as Krishna expands this knowledge into how devotional service works in different areas. There are different moods. But it, the essence is that uh, material life, the attachments to the results, are, and the, re, the activities performed only bring... Um, at best, some temporary relief from the suffering and material energy. They cannot give happiness and they cannot satisfy the soul. Soul can only be satisfied with activities of devotion. 
because that those activities connect us with Krishna, and there's where the satisfaction comes. Sometimes devotees will ask, how do we know if Krishna is pleased by the activities we perform? This was a question that often came to Srila Prabhupada. And Prabhupada gave a very simple and easy to understand answer. He says, because we are eternally connected to Krishna, therefore, when Krishna is pleased by the activities of devotional service, we also feel that satisfaction, that pleasure. Yeah, when you connect two things together, then it becomes one. So that oneness is the experience that the living entity has in relationship to Krishna. And Prabhupada makes the point here, to know one's constitutional position means to know also the sublime position of the Lord. That's interesting. To know one's own constitutional position means to know so we know, we have to know who we are. We are not this body and the activities that we perform in the material level are contrary to our happiness and progress in life. Therefore only devotional service. Devotional st service starts when we take shelter of Krishna in the form of his uh, representative, the bona fide spiritual master then that spiritual master will guide us and engage us in activities that are meant to please Krishna. And we can understand how good we are doing or how successful we are in executing it by when the spiritual master is pleased. Yasya prashada bhagavad prashado yasya prashadan nagutikutopi when the spiritual master is pleased, Krishna is automatically pleased. If one tries to think, well, I'll go directly to Krishna and try to please him, it's Nagatiku Topi is simply a useless affair. Because Krishna, although we have an eternal and direct loving relationship with Krishna, because we have broken that by coming to the material world and acting in a materialistic way, we have to renew that relationship in a way that is uh, foundational to its success. And that is that by pleasing the spiritual master, who is Krishna's representative, we actually make progress in devotional service. So these are some of the fundamental points mentioned in this verse. And of course, it, it says that, you know, I think what is being emphasized here over and over again, is that there is, uh, no matter who you are, no matter what your position in the world is, no matter what your uh, identity in the world is, you are surrounded by these four material miseries. Uh, Prabhupada would reject the idea that the material miseries that we claim are miseries are not real miseries. Like I don't have enough money, <laughs> I don't have enough friends, I, you know, I don't have a better, I don't have a position in this world, or there's a, you know, there's a petrol crisis. There is, in other words, the economical, political, social, or even ecclesiastical things that we describe as being something that we attain but can attain are not the actual miseries. Well, is the actual misery is we're not meant to take birth. We're not meant to get old. We're not meant to get sick and, and find ourselves in that awkward position. And we're not meant to die. Death is simply superfluous to the soul because death simply uh, relates to the material body, which we are not. So this is an interesting point because we don't die. Um, the soul is eternal, as Krishna says in the Hanyate Hanyamani Sarire, Ajo Nityam Shashvato Yam Purano, the Hanyate Hanyamane Sarire. For the soul, there's neither birth to death, nor having once been, does he ever cease to be. He's eternal, undying, primeval, immortal. He's not slain when the body is slain. 
So Krishna spends a lot of time in the second chapter, in the very beginning part of the second chapter, at least more than 20 verses, trying to emphasize the fundamental point, which is the basis of spiritual knowledge, that we are something different than this material body. And what happens to the material body does not happen to us. Um, he makes that point at the beginning of the discussion with Arjun, and then from there, he describes various types of activities related to devotional life. So, the second chapter is, um, as it says here, contents of the Gita summarize. This is the essential basic principles that are foundational for understanding higher knowledge. Higher knowledge is ultimately what is our relationship with Krishna on the spiritual platform, aside from devotional service. It's our identity within the spiritual realm. But that comes later in Srimad Bhagavatam. And even in Bhagavad Gita, in the later chapters, Krishna is more or less describing what is transcendental knowledge, what is this material world and how it works, um, what are the, the benefits of performing devotional service, how to perform devotional service, how he protects the living entities from the dangers of this material world. These are all fundamental but very important principles of devotional service. So uh, if we study this material, we have a working knowledge of how to engage in devotional service. Ignorance is the cause of suffering. Knowledge is the cause of freedom. The word ignorance has the word at the beginning, ignore. So ignoring what? Ignoring our relationship with God or ignoring God himself. That is called ignorance. Knowledge is, some, is what, what is the reality of relationships where we find success and ultimately happiness. And uh, so this is the essential principles of this verse. It is um, pretty much we covered basically all the points that need to be covered. We can expand on each one of these points to help us go deeper into the the essential principle. But to summarize the whole thing is that material world is not a natural place to be. It's a form of a jail. It's a punishment. And therefore, everyone, and one can actually understand that no one can be happy in a restrictive and punishing type of environment. Freedom and happiness or our constitutional nature and our position. And that only can be found when we get out of the material world or when we get our consciousness out of the material world. And that is simply on the spiritual platform, on the eternal platform. Okay, so these are some simple principles in this, but if there's some discussion on any of these points, please begin. Hare Krishna, thank you so much, Maharaj. It was wonderful. Um, so, um, devotees, if anybody has any questions, you have a choice either to vote it on the chat box or just unmute yourself and uh, just uh, speak out. Uh, please do that, Maharaj. In the meantime, whilst we're waiting for questions, I just, uh, just tell you what uh, things that I picked up from this class, which is very, very interesting, basic but very nice reminders. Devotional service, Maharaj mentioned, is practice. It's a lifelong practice. And Maharaj mentioned the longer we remain practicing Krishna consciousness, the stronger we became, become in Krishna consciousness. There is no substitution to practice. And uh, another interesting thing Maharaj mentioned was that the desire, just our simple desire to please Krishna is enough. Krishna is just happy with the desire to please him. Our, our ultimate action. Is, is, is there, of course, but uh, more relevant is our desire to please him. He's happy when we just want to please him. 
And the uh, important question of how do we know if Krishna is pleased? Then uh, Krishna, when Krishna is pleased, we will automatically become pleased because we are uh, eternally connected with Krishna. These are some very, very nice points that Maharaj made. Um, anybody have any questions? Hare Sandeep Prabhu, you are unmuted. Yes, yes. Hare Krishna Prabhu, Hare Krishna Maharaj. Um, please offer my humble obeisances. Um, I, I have a question. Uh, my father has been given just few days to live by his doctors now. And uh, what should I tell him in his final days? Well, you should try to connect him as much as you can to the to the spiritual energy. In other words, what we do is, is he, if he's inclined, you can put pictures of Radha and Krishna, the Acharyas in the room. You can play the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra or Prabhupada's Bhajans. You can uh, give him Tulsi leaves, Ganga water. Um, but for his mind, in order to satisfy him, you should ex explain that, you know, that you that uh, if he can think of Krishna, as Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, yam yam sma, yam yam bhavi smaram bhavam, taktve ante kalevaram, tam tam evaite konte sadata bhava bhavitaha. One who thinks of me at the time of death will actually attain to my nature. So thinking of Krishna at the time of death generally requires a lifetime of devotion, which formulates our consciousness where it becomes natural to think of Krishna at the time of death. But it's not relegated to that, only that. If you can somehow create within his life the atmosphere that Krishna is there, he is the Supreme Lord. You have a wonderful relationship with him. This world is temporary, as he'll probably, he can understand now that he has to leave soon. Um, that there's another world where life is eternal, full of knowledge, full of joy. And that's the world we belong to. Um, so surrounding him by spiritual activities in terms of the paraphernalia we use, and at the same time, if he's um, receptive, we can speak about, we all, you know, ten the tendency is that when someone is leaving, they're lamenting their departure. Try to dissuade him or divert him away from that mood and point him, he's moving on, he's going to another place, show him that there is a better place and that where life is eternal, uh, we're free from all material sufferings. It's called the kingdom of God. So become become very positive. If you are also dragged down by his departure, then you can very do very do very little good for him. Always remain positive. Explain that that soon he will be in another place and. He can choose where to go. He can choose to come back to this material world in another body, or he can choose to go back to the spiritual world and live eternally. So um, keep it positive and keep him surrounded with material and uh, spiritual activities, such as chanting and uh, uh, pictures, Tulsi leaves, Ganga water, anything that's positive, anything that's spiritual. And this is the most important part of life. Uh, departure of the soul from the body is given emphasis in Vedic culture as the most important part of life because it determines wh what our next life will be.
हरे कृष्ण प्रभु जी थैंक यू सो मच धन्यवाद प्रणाम प्रभु जी आई आई गोट अ क्वेश्चन रिमेम्बरिंग कृष्णा समबडी हु इज नॉट हंड्रेड परसेंट कृष्णा कॉन्शियस बट हैज वर्शिप कृष्णा कैरीज द फोटोज ऑफ कृष्णा but not chanting or not chanted in his lifetime but still remembers krishna at the end of his life is that something that overrides his karma and desires that he has had in his life that special mercy okay. but um that's the goal ultimately there are there are one can accelerate their devotion in the very last part of life if they focus completely on the lord uh there are examples of that where a person hasn't come up to the standard but still at the time of death if everything was in place and somehow or other they're able to remember krishna and krishna when he says you know if you remember me at the time of death you also you come back to me yes reason i'm asking is i remember a person very near to me that towards the end of his life he called me and told me that i'm going away and he pointed up with his fingers and he said can you get the krishna photo with this radha ji was in front of him he kept looking at this photograph and he told me to play bhagavad gita which was at that time was in the audio format so i put it on and he was looking at krishna and radha ji is uh, radha rani's photograph and that's how he passed away so that success mm-hmm. yeah you yeah. can't get you know that you can't get any better than that wow. seeing the beautiful form of the lord and hearing the transcendental sound vibration is complete hare krishna pranam to you prabhu ji hare krishna hare krishna hare krishna prabhu ji hare krishna we got messages on the chat uh, Uh, saying that really really enjoy the class very uplifting class very nice answer to prabhu ji's question about his dear father living his last days um, any other questions anybody any points to raise hari krishna maharaj yes. hari krishna hari krishna hari krishna dano pranam maharaj all glory to shila prabhu pa thank you so much for a wonderful class and uh, my dhanwad pranam to all the devotees maharaj i have a question that um, what is the way best way to remain always enthusiastic in krishna consciousness because shrila prabhupad said that chant and be happy and that means he wanted us all to be very enthusiastic always in krishna consciousness so maharaj can you guide how to keep that enthusiasm going always yeah by 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 association with the bodies and chanting the hari krishna maha mantra performing the activities of devotion in the association of the bodies you'll see any activity becomes wonderful when we do it together when all when more than one person together are working in the same way the activity becomes more and more wonderful so especially in devotional service so seek out the association of the devotees and when you're not directly in the association of the devotees you can find that association by hearing the lectures given by shila prabhupada by reading his books by chanting the hari krishna maha mantra um and if you have deities at home you can also worship the lord in his deity form all these things can be done in association or if the association is not available for whatever reason you will associate with the lord and with the spiritual energy when you perform the activity if we keep our mind focused on what we're doing that's the important thing we have to practice to become absorbed in whatever we're doing whether it's chanting reading serving Hare Krishna thank you Maharaj thank you Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Maharaj please accept my humble obeisances all glories to Shri Prabhupad um uh, i was just wondering how can we uh, help ourselves uh, because when you are young you are 
you know you are so enthusiastic you're you're doing all the service you feel so joyful you feel so connected to krishna but as the body gets old and pains and aches comes and at that time I can't do that and um, you feel kind of a not um you know so able to do all the things you're doing in an older age than you're young how, how do we how do we keep up our spirit uh, to yeah. the way we, when we well, are young Thank yeah you. when you're young you, you can tend to be more active as you become older you also be hopefully you're making advancement as you go through your age you go through your life then it becomes more more within the mind then we start finding more satisfaction and happiness and chanting and reading so then we might do less of the you know these physical activities and more of the mental activities uh, life seems to evolve in that direction also and ultimately if we can get absorbed in chanting then you know that is the best form of service thank you Maharaj. thank you so much Hare Krishna. Uh, Hare, Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj. there is a question here on the chat box from venkat prabhu he's saying Hare Krishna Maharaj. if a person leaves his body remembering krishna but not in a favorable mood does he or she receive still go back to godhead hmm. well the, pr the principle is to remember krishna uh, favorable unfavorable mood i think that can only be understood from krishna's point of view if krishna wants to show some mercy one way or the other kamsa Kamsa remembered Krishna at the time of death, but he was, it was definitely not a favorable mood. Um, so it doesn't say that he went back to the spiritual world, but he did get liberation. So even in an unfavorable mood, uh, one will get a higher, will get a, a spiritual position somewhere. They may not attain the ultimate going back to Godhead but they may also get liberation or go, going to another area of the, of the universe. And uh, they may go to the heavenly planets. They also may go to the same planet that Krishna is on in the material world because Krishna also performs activities in the material world constantly in one of the, in one of the universes. So that's hard to say, it's an individual thing. But ultimately, to remember Krishna is, is auspicious. Bhutana remembered Krishna at the time of death, and she got a position as his mother. But because she performed the activities of a mother by offering her milk to Krishna, Krishna accepted her as his mother. And therefore, she got a very elevated position. But she didn't go back to Godhead. She got a very high spiritual position. So um, it's always auspicious to remember Krishna, but for devotees, we should do it favorably. Krishna Prabhuji, Hare Krishna Maharaj. Um, I'm thinking of somebody who has lost their um, faculties and they're, they're probably unconscious and they've been a true good devotee, but at that moment, they weren't able to remember Krishna how does the person stand in achieving Krishna's abode? Yeah, they're, you know, it's not up to them at that point. That's up, then it's all depends on Krishna's mercy. Krishna will make the decision how he wants to elevate that soul. You have to understand there's another principle that is called mercy. And that you can't really see because there's maybe something in that person's life that was outstanding in their devotional life that attracted the attention of Krishna and Srila Prabhupada. So uh, devotional service is not so cut and dry where you do this and you get this. 
we know the principles, we try to follow the principles, but ultimately the element of mercy makes the difference on what results we get. So a lot of times we pray, those who are connected with that soul, who we pray for their elevation. And that can also make a difference after they depart. We also perform rituals after they depart in order to push that soul further along the path of devotional service. So it's by the assembly of devotees who are well-wishers of that departed soul that they can also get extra mercy. But their final destination is in the hands of the Supreme Lord. Hi, Krishna. Thank you, Maharaj. So there's one comment and one question on chat. So I'll just read the comment first. This comment is from Lila Purushottam Prabhu. He's saying, thank you very much for the enlightening class. Your Holiness is empowered by Srila Prabhupada to preach to prisoners all over the world for a long time. Uh, also, despite your other risk on responsibilities of preaching and guiding devotees. Thank you very much, Maharaj. That's the comment from Lila Purushottam Prabhu. Then there's a question from Seema Mataji, Seema Singhal Mataji saying, uh, Maharaj, if someone is leaving the body and is in pain, but people around them are chanting Krishna's name, will it give them liberation? Again, it's the same principle. It's up to Krishna. <laughs> we do as much as we can, and everything depends on the Lord. But we should try to provide as much favorable conditions during the departure and even after the departure. Ultimately, everything is up to the Lord. Thank he sees so the whole picture. We don't see the whole picture. Yes, very nice. Thank you. One, just one last question because it's coming up to 10 to 9. Maharaj also needs to obviously take rest. Last question I'll take, and this question is from, okay, I can't see the name, name of the person. It says, uh, can a person who is new to chanting and learning texts be given some mercy, at least if they are near the end of life? So if yeah. Are, yeah. We have to understand mercy is always available. And the more you want the mercy, and the more you show you want the mercy by acting in, in that way, that mercy is available. Mercy is the difference between uh, one type of result and another type of result. So we all, therefore, we always beg for the Lord's mercy for so. us and for others. We also pray for the Lord to show their mercy to others also. Thank you, Hare Krishna. Mm -hmm. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much, Maharaj. I know it's very late, uh, but I really, 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 on behalf of everybody on this group, uh, thank you so much, Maharaj, for giving us a wonderful time. I know that you are here just for a limited time. I hope that we have your version very, very soon again, Maharaj. Now that the traveling is opening up, hopefully we will see, uh, uh, hopefully have your version more often. Um, thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to uh, speak tonight. I was really inspired when I received the, the invitation. And I was really impressed to see so many devotees online. So that was nice. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Thank you very much. So this is the chat group. We actually started this group uh, when we went into lockdown. So every evening we uh, get together like this and we recite uh, one well, one chapter we recite, and then we pick one verse from there and we go deeper into that. And this has been going on since then. Hopefully, we'll continue with your blessings for many, many more years like this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Maharaj. Hari, Hari. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you, Krishna. Thank you very much, Maharaj. Thank you, Krishna. Thank you, Maharaj. 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 Thank you,